So this year I had to rebuild our fence because it was falling down. And I kid you not, it was a lot of work. I originally had a guy who was gonna build us the fence, but he quit actually a day before he was gonna start. And if you know anything about island living, getting labor to come over and do a project for you is difficult, the best of times. And uh, I just decided I'm just gonna do the fence myself. So it took um, two, three months for me to do this fence in my uh, free time over the weekends. And here it is, hope you guys like it. It's got some sort of, uh, um, you know, it's still a fence, but you can see through it. You can see the water from the deck height and also from the uh, garden height, as you can see through those viewing windows. So this is my uh, Jubea chilensis, and I'm happy to say it made the winter. I uh, got down to, you know, minus 10, minus 11 around this area, minus 15 in town, two weeks below freezing, cold winds. I think this fence helped and also being blocked by the uh, hot tub here may have created a bit of a microclimate, helped it survive, but it is pushing on you fronds. It has a little bit of uh, evidence of some cold damage there, but uh, it's pushed out at least two or three fronds already this summer, so I know it's alive. Now, here's a pleasant surprise. Uh, so my Cordyline Australis died, but this Cordyline Indivisa, I had two of them in the garden. This one made it, and it wasn't much bigger than... Uh, it was a tiny plant. I, I just put leaves around it, just on top of it, and it made the winter. And look, it's looking great right now. So I'm I'm just going to grow these, to tell you the truth. They look a lot better than Cordyline Australis, in my opinion. And they're equally hardy, in my opinion, although uh, they may be a little more... Um, delicate to the cold but in terms of wet they're equally equally uh, hardy the cold wet as uh, the australis put a little korean fir here so these are all plants i had uh, before so this musa baju i divided this clump three ways i sold one clump um, the second clump i replanted kind of in the corner over here and this is the uh, remainder and it's doing quite well and here i put some variegated ginger that i had on a pot i potted or i planted in the ground uh, hopefully it would do a lot better and maybe bloom for me this year it hasn't ever bloomed for me in a pot and again this ginger will die back in the winter and then re-sprout in the spring. So it is considered a hardy ginger. This is a colocasia. This is a giant colocasia. Um, I had that in a pot as well. And then there's an alocasia over there. I believe they call that the Thai giant. Also had that in a pot. I planted it out. And in the, I guess in October, I will dig those up, put them in a pot, and put them in the greenhouse. So the alocasia and the colocasia. But the ginger I'll leave, and the uh, bananas will obviously stay in the ground, and we'll, we'll just mulch them. So as I was building the fence, we couldn't really plant anything because of the uh, deer that we have on the island. They would just eat anything. So for now, this bed is empty. Uh, we're going to plant it up with some... My wife, my wife wants to do some uh, food crops in this bed. So uh, for now, I just threw in some aloe and some cacti. Why not? And then there's some deer resistant uh, plants over here. We have some rosemaries, some lavenders, uh, some sage, grasses. Uh, some rotos here. Uh, some more ginger. I transplanted this um, a few days ago, so it's looking a little sad. This is also a hardy ginger. Will um, in the winter will melt down to nothing and then come up in the spring again. Uh, spotty dotties. These are great in the shade, and they they really have a stunning leaf to them. 
lot of patterning. There's our, the, the other trachycarpus fortuna. Absolutely no damage from that winter. So these are real winners of a palm tree. If you, if you live in a temperate uh, growing zone like we have here, uh, you can, this handled uh, minus 10, minus 11, no problem Celsius. In town, minus 15, in some places even less than that, and they were fine. This uh, Schlaffera Taiwaniana, I noticed absolutely zero damage on this one uh, from the winter. So that's another winner of a plant. This is my Tetrapanix, um, and <laughs> this thing died right back down to the roots. And you can kind of see the evidence of the original stock. Um, and then it came up from the roots with a new shoot. And I recently transplanted it. It actually had a lot more leaves to it. And this one's looking kind of sad. It's just because of uh, transplant shock. But it's, a, it's coming back strong. So, you know, these are a good choice if you're in a similar growing zone. And, you know, in a minus 10 Celsius type winter, they'll die back down to the ground, but they'll come up again. And maybe a more mature plant could be a bit more resilient, I think. Could be similar to the uh, Schlaffera here and, and retain the stalk and, and leaves. But we'll, we'll see as it grows up. More spotty dotties and all kinds of shade loving plants there. Um, another thing I should mention, when we redid the fence, we got uh, the landscaping redone. So I used to have a, um, a bed here made out of landscape ties. And we had a machine come in and place these rocks instead. And this will last forever. I don't have to worry about rotting wood, which was the case with my landscape ties after about six years. So that's the end result right there. And of course, all these plants have been newly planted about a month and a half ago. So they're all pretty small still. So it looks a little sparse right now, but it will fill in with time. It's a big uh, black fig we have and giant bamboo in the back. Those both made the winter no problem. Ephahosia, pineapple guava. That also is super hardy and made the winter no problem. Um, here we have a strawberry guava and a lemon guava. Both those are pretty hardy. They're actually hardy down to like minus 33 Celsius. But I did bring them into the greenhouse when it got really cold. And they're actually good producers. They produce a lot of fruit for us each year. Here's some citrus. So as you may recall, I did have a citrus bed on the back of the house where I had citrus planted. And unfortunately we were in Hawaii during the, the, during the freeze and I did not protect the citrus in any way. I put a few Christmas lights on it, but it was really not enough and uh, they all died. So I did replace them this year with new ones. So this is the bear's lime, a Kishu mandarin and a Meyer lemon. And I'm going to keep these in pots for now. I think that's the best way. I can leave them out most of the year. And if it gets really cold, I can just bring them into the greenhouse. I think that's a win-win. I don't have to worry about protecting them outside. Uh, some hot peppers I'm growing. That's a uh, blood orange and a variegated lemon. There's the greenhouse. Not much to see in there right now. I have some succulents going some eoniums, foxtail agave, this is a queen of the night, um, orchid cactus, and as you can see, it's got blooms on it. So these blooms actually open up only for one night, only for a few hours, and it's gotta be pitch dark. So <laughs> we're looking forward to that. I've never actually seen this plant bloom, and I've had it for over a year. Some more uh, succulents here. It's our trusty bougainvillea always blooming for us this thing blooms year round i keep you not in this greenhouse and we keep the temperatures in the winter about 10 celsius so i heat it but just barely got more succulents up there on the shelf and it's our aquaponics but right now it's not really producing too much 
Uh, it's the workers, the uh, fish that provide the nutrients for the aquaponics. And here we have uh, some uh, bananas. These guys actually produce fruit. Dwarf uh, banana plant. Um, but we'll, we shall see, I haven't got any fruit yet. And then uh, I have my Washingtonia. So there's Filifera and Filibusta. I put all three in a pot because I had so many of them and I had no, no space really for them. So I just threw them all in the pot. These guys were outside for most of the winter. I threw them into the greenhouse during the coldest parts. Um, they're doing well. So this was the cit citrus bed that I had last year. It's under this overhang with glass against the south side of the building. And I had a temperature controller with uh, Christmas lights on there, but unfortunately it wasn't enough for what we had for temperatures and, and all the citrus died. This year we kind of changed it up and just, we put some peach trees here, some pomegranate, some dwarf uh, apricot. And we actually have some fruit under here and some peach. Also have some fruit. And uh, quince. And this is a loquat. It's a bit of a jungle in here. I haven't really done any pruning. Probably should. <laughs> um, here is some more bananas. We got some pawpaws back here. They still haven't produced any fruit for us yet, but they do bloom, so hopefully soon. And then we have kiwis just along here. These are asparagus ferns. And these are all kiwis here on a vine. And we have two different types of kiwis along this vine. And normally we get a good flush of fruit from that. Also wanted to show you my big leaf magnolia. This is Magnolia officinalis. And it survived the winter and is now putting out some big leaves again. It's a really cool exotic looking magnolia. What else to show you guys? Most of the stuff here has been here in the past. This yucca collar guard blooming for us. My uh, big leaf rhododendron Cine Grande actually made the winter, which I'm quite happy about. And uh, Spider's Web Fatsia also made the winter. And my Schlaffera de la Vea also made the winter, no problems. And look at the size of the leaves on this guy, really nice. Nice and big, really exotic looking. And as we come up here, it's just the ornamental part of the garden. Just some uh, rotos here, green magnolias. our water tank for our rainwater in case uh, we need to use it. Pseudocasia frisia. It's a big leaf rhododendron rex. Beautiful plant. We've got a couple big leaf rotas in here. There's one there. There's another there. Tall bamboo. Rotos in there. Baby spruce, baby blue spruce. It's a star anise plant right here. Got 
kind of unique and in interesting. Some apples. It's a goji berry. And then here we have our berry patch with raspberries, blackberries, gooseberries, red currants, all kinds of fun stuff. Plum, another plum. Tomatoes. Our squash bed, which is getting crazy. We have a lot of squash. Got some pair of olives here. Now these guys, these guys were in uh, 15 gallon pots. These olives, and they made the winter no problem. Minus 11. Couldn't believe it. So we decided, hey, they're they're keepers. So we planted them in the ground. They're a little sparse, but I think it might be just transplant shock, and it's been quite warm out. Another evergreen magnolia there. These used to be veggie beds, but right now they're kind of overtaken by flowers. And then I got a Korean fur back there. Kind of like these Korean furs, they're really, really neat. They got a cool growing structure to them. With nice up, upright uh, cones. Kind of exotic looking. Anyways, that's that's it. That's all I have to show you guys. Uh, the winter was shit, and most of the things survived, but there were a lot of losses. So I lost all my camera ops humulus. I lost my one of my camera ops surferas. The other one got severely damaged. One of my needle palms got damaged. Um, I lost some rostratus. I lost my cordyline australis. Um, just trying to think what else I lost, but yeah, all my citrus. There were some losses for sure. So, you know, hopefully we don't have a winter like that again anytime soon. I, I know we'll have it again eventually, but hopefully not for another 15 and 20 years. And again, we were gone. We were in Hawaii. I could not protect my plants. So if I was around here to protect my plants, I probably wouldn't have lost anything, to tell you the truth. Because I'm proactive. I have all the stuff to protect them. So it's just a pity. Unfortunately, that's what happened. But uh, it's all good. We're replanting. We're picking out plants that are a little more hardy that we know that will survive that are real winners and hopefully we won't have to worry too much about it in the future beautiful uh rostratus i just love them i actually just moved the rostrata here to the front Another big one. Also made the winter totally fine. So that's the front bed. So for now, guys. Hello from beautiful Bone Island. Have a great day.